tell you who is going to come here. That's Dr. Peter Cosmos, who's an expert in epiculture in Slovenia, a beekeeper with more than 25 years experience, researcher, graduate of biotechnology in Ljubljana, an expert in zootechnology. In 2003, he started working for our National Institute of uh, Biology, specialist in entomology, in 2007, described the uh, genetic differences in Slovenia of the bumblebee compared to other countries, then started work in the Agricultural Institute deals with protection of plants and impact of agriculture and development of bee colonies. 2014, he joined the uh, Slovenian Institute uh, of Beekeepers. He specializes in Kraina bees, protector of behavior of uh, protection of Ukrainian bee, consultant in many countries where he became familiar with various forms of epiculture and types of bees. He has worked with many technologies, climate dependent, of course, as well as accessibility of our different plants. Hello. I hope that you hear me. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Oh, very nice. Okay, then I will start. First of all, I would like to say a big thank you for the invitation that I have opportunity to present my work on this very nice event. Also, thank you, Anna, for very nice uh, introduction. And yes, uh, today I will talk about uh, beekeeping in Slovenia and uh, what we are doing. And I hope that you will get some ideas uh, for your future work. But before I start, I would like to share with you some uh, information. Who, who am I? I am I'm a also beekeeper. I'm not just scientist. I have more than 100 bee colonies. So each afternoon in the season, I am with my, with my bees. I'm also editor. Also, I was leader of the World Bee Day initiative at our Slovenian Beekeepers Association. Uh, I was very proud of that work. I am the second mandate. I'm also president of the Council of Beekeeping at our Ministry for Agriculture, Forestry and Food. I am also for almost more than 10 years professional leader of breeding program for our Carniolan bees and as you probably know, I'm also Apimondia Vice President. Uh, here are some pictures about my uh, beekeeping farm. I have bees on four different uh, locations. I have two quite big movable units to, to produce uh, uniflora honey. I also have one apiary, as almost all beekeepers here in Slovenia. So I use those bees also for api tourism, also for um, uh, queen rearing, and also I have one small location for nucleus. Um, I have also one shop selling different uh, bee products, so I'm very glad that all products I produce, I sell directly to the final consumers. This is very good because price are much higher in comparison if you are selling uh, bee products to some uh, shops or maybe to some traders. So some words about Slovenia. Slovenia, it is a very small country. It is it, We have only 2 million of people, but we believe that we are in the heart of uh, Europe and we have uh, everything. We have few Alps, we have also Mediterranean Sea, also a lot of uh, valleys, nice rivers and so on. So it, it is very nice to visit Slovenia and observe our tourist attractions. Some numbers about beekeeping in Slovenia. As I mentioned, only 2 million people are living here in Slovenia, but within these 2 million, there are more than 11,000 beekeepers. This is quite a big number. They have, or we have, more than 12,000 apiaries and altogether more than 200,000 honeybee colonies. So um, our beekeepers are um, 
are mostly hobby beekeepers. They have just around average beekeepers, around 15 honey bee colonies. Also, our honey production, it is not very high. It is only 15 kg honey per colony and total production, average total production, it is around 1,700 tons of honey. But this year's as you already know, and at the end explained yesterday, it was catastrophic also for Slovenia. So we produce just 200 um, uh, tons of honey. So just less than 10% of our consumption, which we need. So uh, it will be very easy to sell honey and probably the traders will have a lot of, a lot of work to import honey from abroad for our, our needs. Otherwise, in every year, we are very proud that beekeepers are sell uh, around 80% of honey directly to the consumers. Uh, it is also very important that uh, Apis mellifera carnica, it is autochthonous in the whole country. And it is also prohibited to use any other subspecies except our Apis mellifera carnica. And of course, we also have very rich beekeeping um, history. Um, yes, here are some pictures about from our museums and also from our landscape about about beekeeping. We also have uh, it is quite often that our beekeepers uh, use migratory units to produce unifloral honey, and also if you want to be economic beekeepers, it is the only way that you are moving bees from one location to the another otherwise uh, our pasture conditions are not so good that it will be possible to to have very good beekeeping and that you have bees only on one locations you must find a way how to move their bees from one location to the another and beekeepers are using mostly units which you may see here on those pictures so they are using mostly um, uh, trucks and in some cases also tractors for not so long distances. Probably you also know that here in Slovenia, apiaries or bee houses are very, very popular. Each beekeeper has uh, one or even more uh, bee hive, uh, apiaries. Here you may see different, different uh, apiaries. They are quite nice, very colorful. And we are using in this um, apiaris our beehive, Aje beehive, which is uh, in some cases it has some advantages, but also some disadvantages. It is um, advantages are that it is possible to put a lot of bee colonies in very small area. It is also very good that you don't need to be very strong. Uh, uh, to work with those bees because it is not heavy for manipulation because because you are just uh, working with frames one frames two frames not with the whole super so it is not heavy and uh, because these beehives are um, part in the upper uh, you can work also when weather is not uh, perfect when it's um, raining or maybe it is very windy it is possible to work with bees but of course these beehives also have some disadvantages and one of very important it is that it is very complicated to to make it so therefore it is also expensive the average price it is around 150 euros and uh, we have problems uh, in some cases also with swarming because for s very strong families um, these beehives are not big enough so swarming is a very big is this big problem from this technolo technology and of course it is very time consuming to to have these beehives because it is not possible to move the whole um, the whole uh, units, but you must move or working just with each frame. So it takes a lot of time. Uh, yes, we have very uh, popular and I believe that also very uh, successful association, Slovenian Beekeepers Association, 
which has very uh, long long tradition because it was established more than 140 years ago and brings together all 212 local beekeepers associations so beekeepers are first member of local beekeepers association then those associations are member of regional um, associations and then we have only one uh, association which is on national level it is we don't have it two or three but only one and of course i'm also working in this association our the main purpose it is to help and to educate uh, beekeepers and therefore we are also publishing our magazine slovenian beekeeper which is also very old uh, because uh, we publish it for more than 130 years it is also very important that slovenian beekeepers association has concession for public advisory service on beekeeping so our ministry gives gives us this concession and also money to to do it so we have tasks which we are doing for our ministry and the same thing it is with that that slovenian beekeepers association it is also approved breeders organizations also our ministry gives us uh, this rule and also money and tasks that we are doing also selection yes here on the first picture you may see our building it is quite uh, big it is center and hosts the headquarters of the our slovenian beekeepers association also uh, it is the seat of the advisory service also we have here in this location some laboratory with just beekeeping beekeeping uh, magazines uh, we have yes a, a library also a laboratory for making different analyses of bee products also we have shop selling beekeeping equipment and products and also editor of our magazine is situated in this location also we have restaurant also some rooms so it is possible also for people who are coming from abroad to overnight in our association so some words about uh, our magazine slovenian uh, beekeeper we believe that it is very important that we have it and we um, read about different topics in this magazine we are reading about preservation of our subspecies of pismellifera carnica in our country also we are write a lot of about honeybee diseases about technology economics marketing so for beekeepers it is very important that they are receiving this magazine each month and all important informations are included in that magazine so we believe that this magazine unite us that unite all beekeepers together because they are motivated to become our member because they would like to receive this magazine and uh, after they become member of the local beekeepers association automatically they are member of our association so they are receiving this magazine and uh, more than 75 percent of all beekeepers are members of local beekeepers association and then also our national association so association has very strong voice when our president are talking with ministry because he is talking in the names of 75 of all beekeepers this is very important because um, if you have strong voice and good ideas it is this first very important step also in the realization of each idea which we have yes uh, we also know that we are not the smartest uh, in the world so we are therefore our association it is of course member of different association of course we are member of apimondia for many many years also we are member of apislavia also european professional beekeepers association also colos also we are a member or we are collaborating in different projects because we believe that we must search knowledge also outside our country our borders 
and to when we found it to to bring it in our country spread to the beekeepers and that this is the best way that we can be more successful also in the future so um, just to explain you how government especially our ministry are supporting our um, beekeepers um, government or our ministry uh, give us some money from public extension service also they give us or beekeepers through breeding program some money also we have eight vets who are paid from the government just to help beekeepers dealing with uh, bee diseases also we have as other countries in european union this beekeeping program which is uh, uh, gave us 50-50 money for our bee products. Also, we get some money from research. So, altogether, from our government and also a little from European Union, we are receiving about 2 million euros. So, approximately, or in average, 10 euros for each bee colony which we have here in Slovenia. So, we believe it is quite good money and we try to do the best things in the way to help beekeepers to be more successful also in the future. We are also very motivated to organize different events. We organize Apimondia in 2003, also uh, uh, Apimedica 2010, also Kolos meeting 2015 because we believe where each of events are organized in our country then the best scientists are coming to our country and those scientists can explain the new knowledge uh, to our beekeeper so it is the best way how to receive the latest knowledge and to put directly to the beekeepers so therefore we are so motivated to organize different events to receive knowledge from abroad to our country and if events is in our country then it is also possible for our beekeepers to join those events much easier in comparison if events is organized somewhere i don't know in different countries far countries or the other continent because it is very 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 uh, expensive to travel very far so uh, about public extension service this is service is very important it was established after apimondia 2003 was organized in slovenia so we use that event to to start working on higher level we convince government after apimondia congress that beekeeping it is very important that they must support us so next year 2004 we uh, establish this service eight specialists are working or permanent employed in this um, service and also we have 20 field consultants so these are um, very good beekeepers who has a contract with us and they are doing uh, also work in the field they are helping advising directly to beekeepers so if beekeepers has any problems with their bees, it is possible for them to call one of the those five consultant and explain them which problems they have. And sometimes through the telephone, this consultant helps to each beekeepers. If this is not possible, then uh, he came to their place to see where is the problem, and then they find they find to try the right solution. And of course, this service operates on the basis of the five-year approved program by ministry. So end of this year, this program will be finished, but we already prepared program for next five-year uh, period. So we are waiting right now that ministry will confirm, confirm it. So uh, what we are doing in um, this extension service, we are doing a lot of advising education and extension training of beekeepers also also we are doing a lot of with children because we believe that children are 
it is very important to teach them because in the one hand children will become some day, some days also adults they must be aware about bees about environment about bee products and also when they are children they are sometimes learning their parents it is also very nice that in this way we are learning their parents or oldest people also we are doing a lot of educational and promotional campaigns project for public uh, because we believe that if public it is aware about bees uh, then they will know how to react how to where to buy bee products and so on so we need educated uh, public if we need to be successful also in beekeeping field so something about promotional and educational projects what we are organizing we are organizing beekeepers day day of epitherapy beekeepers open day day of honey quality shims happy tourism day we are participating in different fairs to explain visitors what we are doing also we are organized different conferences or symposiums we are publish a lot of educational promotional materials movies also we have different web pages for uh, beekeepers bee breeders happy tourism for general public so a lot of different things we are doing on the promotional uh, area um, we are very glad that since 2008 we increased the number of pupils included in these clubs beekeeping clubs in primary schools uh, nowadays we have more than more than 3000 pupils included in the in those clubs organized in primary schools and we have uh, clubs in more than 200, 200 uh, primary schools so all together in Slovenia there are around 60 600 primary schools so we have in one third of all primary schools those beekeeping clubs are are organized and we believe this is very good success so one example how do we organize open uh, door day at slovenian beekeepers we at the association we choose the right day for example we say 15th of september we will organize open door day at slovenian beekeepers we inform about this date all our members all local beekeepers association and ask them if they are prepared to collaborate and if they are they must find the beekeepers who is willing to to have open door day so each association collect those information and give us back to our association we put all data together and then we are doing the whole full promotion so we promote through the television and through the newspapers we also prepare one press release when we uh, uh, inform public which beekeepers has open door day in the whole slovenia so people can find where in their surroundings it is one beekeeper who has open door day so it's possible for anybody to go to those beekeepers and ask what he is doing also why uh, he he has their bees which products he is he is producing so it is very good for beekeepers to to uh, sell honey also to get new customers and also in the other hand it is good for the um, uh, uh, public to be more informed about beekeepers what they are doing also here are some examples about about uh, different uh, materials we are producing for promotion it is also very important that we have this uh, service uh, observation forecasting service of honeybee pastures uh, in slovenia on first picture you may see map you may see map of slovenia and on these red pots on this map you may see where we have these um, stations in each stations we have um, one beehive on the scale so each 
evening we collect the information where in Slovenia the bees collect the biggest amount of honey. So based on that data, uh, uh, beekeepers who are moved their bees from one location to the another can choose where in Slovenia is the best way to move their bees. So it is very important, especially for commercial beekeepers, to know where is the best pasture in one specific period because it is not allowed to move our bees abroad to different countries it is possible just to move bees inside our countries and this service give us good information where in slovenia are the best pasture and it is also good to see when the pasture ends Yes, in uh, after Apimondia 2003, we or, which we organized in Ljubljana, after that event, we saw that a lot of uh, visitors uh, come back to our country in next years, and they didn't want to see just our the best tourist attractions, but they are searching also of beekeepers, and they want to know what beekeepers are doing in our countries so therefore we start to working with uh, tourist agencies and nowadays we have a lot of tourist programs where are also included uh, things from beekeeping sector so when some group of people from Netherlands for Germany Austria comes to Slovenia they don't observe just the best our tourist attraction but also something connected with bees with beekeepers and this is also very good because in that case beekeepers has very good chance to sell bee products to tourists yes I already mentioned we don't produce enough honey for our consumption uh, we produce around in average 1500 tons of honey it depends from year to year but this is not enough because we in Slovenia we eat more than two kilo per inhabitant so we need more than 4000 tons of honey so in average we produce less than 50 percent of honey which we need for our consumption and of course our beekeepers are also produce bee pollen royal jelly propolis and so on also we have some quality shims in slovenia we have slovenian honey we also have uh, kochewski forest honey and also uh, uh, kraski honey these are very popular uh, quality shims in Slovenia the problems it is that we don't have enough honey in these shims so it is very hard to find this honey in the shops because beekeepers usually sell um, beeke uh, these products directly to the final consumers and sometimes it's very hard to find uh, honey of these shims uh, in the shop Yes, we are also organizing a lot of honey assessments, first on the uh, local level, then on the regional level, and then in the end also in the national level. We organize uh, these um, assessments for more than 10 years. We start after La Pimondia, so it is almost 20 years, and it is not important just to find out which beekeepers produce the best honey sometimes is even more important that beekeepers who decide to go to this honey assessment that he after the assessment he received the information uh, which mistakes he did with honey processing and based on this information he can produce next year more quality or high quality honey and um, we believe that based that because of these honey assessments we increase honey quality in our country very much in last decades so it is not important just to find out which uh, beekeepers produce the best honey it is sometimes even more important for quality to increase honey quality in country Yes, we also have some 
very important initiatives, projects, uh, which we start many years ago. First, it is this honey breakfast, which we start in 2008. Now it's a very popular initiative. We organize this honey breakfast every third Friday in November. So last Friday, we organize it again. And everything starts in 2008 when we ask beekeepers to take two kilos of honey and to bring it to the nearest kindergarten and give them over there for free. And when children are eat this honey in kindergarten, just to explain them that this is honey, that bees produce this honey, that why it's healthy to eat honey and other bee products, why bees are important, and so on and so on. And uh, we find out that this is very good practice because children were very satisfied about this action. So each year since 2008, we increase this action. Also 2012, also our ministry started to support this initiative. So since 2012, this is day of Slovenian uh, food because ministry support this action also they give they give money for each primary schools to buy not honey but also other local produced uh, products and to organize breakfast because usually in primary schools they don't organize uh, breakfast but um, since 2012 each third friday in november they have breakfast for everybody and in this breakfast, the children are eat honey, local produced honey, also bread, milk, buffer, and apple. And our ministry are uh, promoting in this action local produced food. And also in last uh, years, also Ministry for Health joined this action because they saw that it is easy to promote uh, breakfast uh, through this action. Because for some children, it is very important to eat breakfast in the morning, because in that case, uh, it is much easier to learn in school. So we believe this is very, very uh, good action. Also World Bee Day, which we started in 2014, and then 2017, finally United Nations declared 20 May for World Bee Day. This is also our, we believe, very successful action because through this action we can raise public awareness about the importance of bees about because of bee products because of pollination environment and so on and also in the same side to inform people policy makers that bees are facing many threats right now in different countries different uh, regions these uh, problems could be different but anyway bees are facing uh, many treats right now and also in the same time we must suggest solutions to improve the environment for bee survival and of course we need to improve the environment so world bee day it is not just one thing it is not a reason for celebration but it is reason for informing people about importance of bees and of course before that event we are receiving a lot of media attention so we can do many different things um, to inform public we can uh, prepare different articles for newspapers also we can explain about this on the local or national tvs we can learn children also a lot of different ideas we have what is good to do before world be dead day and also what we must teach public about this also we must explain them what we must do in the future to conserve this and of course pesticides are problem number one in the world world right now also in some or almost everywhere it is problem that bees uh, have problems how to find uh, honey plants so we must uh, plant honey plants also, we need uh, more meadows with flowering uh, flowers over there. Also, we must learn people that they must uh, eat local produced honey. Also, in some cases, it is important to moral support uh, beekeepers because beekeepers, they must 
feel support from their surroundings. Also, they must sell their products. So sometimes it is enough if people go to the nearest beekeepers and to buy honey from that, because also this is one good moral support for the beekeepers. Also, we have a lot of a lot of um, promotional material connected with World Bee Day. Also, it is important to mention that we have also this book, No Bees, No Life, where is also Anna Gaida, one of the most, one of the important author of one very interesting article in those uh, book. And of course, we also have new project uh, for the future. This year, we we will deliver um, firstly first Golden Bee Award. Our president of our republic, uh, Borut Pahor, will give this award. Uh, it was one call out a um, few months ago. We received a lot of different projects and we check which project is uh, the best. So we will 20 of December of this uh, this year we will deliver this Golden Bee Award. It is also quite good financial award. I think that it is more than 20,000 euros. And also we will open the next second call for Golden Bee Award because we would like that each year of on 20th of May we will deliver one Golden Bee Award. So you are kindly invited to check on our web web page on the web page of our ministry and uh, and to if you have some good project which is this already finished done to 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 apply for this golden bee award and our the latest latest project it is um, uh, slovenian before which planting day because we would like to start initiative that we must take care for bees through different plants honey uh, Slovenian bee forage planting day and uh, we would like that all Europe will start think in this way that we must plant different uh, trees and also flowers which are good for for bees so some our results from to since 2005 we are quite uh, glad that we have that we increase the number of beekeepers in Slovenia so we have it enough sometimes even too much we have more than 11000 also we are very glad that we decrease age structure of beekeeper so now is less than 60 years old this is very important because youngest beekeepers it is much easier to learn about new knowledge uh, also we are glad that we have more children involved in beekeeping clubs we have more clubs also, the price of honey is much higher since 2005. Also, we have 35 certified apitourism in Slovenia. We increase the consumption of honey from one kilo and a half to more than two kilo. Also, we are raised a lot of queens of Apis mellifera carnica, more than 40,000. And this is our very good result. So why we believe that um, we are so successful um, the first reason it is because we have good organization of beekeepers. I already mentioned we have only one national beekeepers association, which is very strong. So voice of our president, it is very strong when he is talking with our ministry. We have good tradition. So a lot of knowledge are in beekeepers. And in some cases, this knowledge goes from one generation to the another. So this is very good way how to transmit the knowledge. Also, our magazine, it is very important to spread the latest knowledge from our side to the beekeepers. We have very strong connection with ministry. Also, because Slovenia is very small, it is much easier to reach ministry because we don't have many levels to reach uh, ministry, just few. Also, I have telephone of our ministry, so it is possible to call him right now. And if he will not answer, he will call me back. Also, we have good integration into international organization because I mentioned we know that we are no, not the smartest one, but we are searching knowledge also abroad. We have good knowledge transfer, especially from this public 
advisory service, so our beekeepers has good support from different parts. We have also good ideas for improving the situation and also good visibility in the world. And in the end, we are quite good in the uh, collaboration, so we must talk together, different parties, and collaborate. And we believe that we are here in Slovenia quite good, and that therefore we can say that we are also very successful. So this was everything from my side. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Peter, for the very interesting presentation and for introducing the beekeeping in Slovenia to us. There are a few questions to you, so please kindly answer them. Thank you, Peter, for this beautiful presentation. I have visited you two times and I'm missing you already. I want more because it's great. But let's move on to questions. Peter. We are from Georgia. Here bees can live and uh, proliferate in nature. Can bees in Slovenia live without human intervention? Can they also live in the nature? Thank you for the question. Uh, yes, I was talking just about our uh, honey uh, subspecies, Apis mellifera carnica, and this subspecies unfortunately it is not possible for it uh, to live without intervention of uh, beekeepers because we have varroa but besides uh, apis mellifera carnica we have more than fi 500 i think that 560 and 35 uh, species of solitary bees and uh, those bees are also very important for pollination because we know that bees are not pollinating all all plants also solitary bees are very important but for those uh, species we are not taking care we need also more data that we will see what is happening with them in last decades because for the bumblebees we know that uh, some uh, some species disappeared in last uh, decades and um, yes right now i believe that we have it quite a lot but i'm afraid what will happen with this solitary species species in the future so we are in negotiation with our ministry to support project that we will have monitoring through which we will see what is happening also with uh, our solitary bees. Thank you very much for this answer. You also mentioned a very important subject of other bees other than honeybee. Let's move on. Next question. What is the percentage share of organic beekeeping farms in Slovenia? Thank you for these questions. Yes, uh, we don't have a lot of uh, organic beekeepers we have it just 150 and the biggest problems it is that we don't know how to explain public that this honey which what which is produced from ecological beekeepers is better than usual honey so it is very hard for those 150 beekeepers how to sell uh, honey to the final consumers for higher prices so we have uh, some measures in the future from which we would like to increase number of ecological beekeepers from this number to 200 or even even more but in the other side we have problems how to explain uh, consumers why is better to buy ecological honey in comparison with conventional honey Thank you, Peter, very much for this answer. I guess we have the same problem everywhere in Europe. <laughs> now another question that I find very interesting. Of course, this is a question from a beekeeper, from the participant. Regarding Slovenia, how do you treat varroses? With what and how? Thank you for this question. Yes, we have a lot of different uh, beekeepers, hobby beekeepers, professional beekeepers, 
also a lot of different uh, medicals are allowed to use here in Slovenia. So uh, it is hard to say which one we are using because we are using everything what is possible, what is allowed. We explaining them why it's better to, to use uh, ecological uh, treatments like oxalic acid, formic acids, but uh, sometimes professional beekeepers are just uh, taking care for their bees in the most efficient way. So also time is very important for them. So in some cases, professional beekeepers are using more chemical um, the treatments because they don't have enough time or or, or knowledge or 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 whatever. Uh, so therefore, we we wish that that I will be possible for me to say that we are using just ecological uh, uh, medicals. But unfortunately, the situation is this: it is uh, much more complicated. So we are basically using uh, what is in the market, and everything is on the market. We just uh, uh, say or we are uh, explaining them that everything what is allowed they can use, but they must be very careful that to use in the proper way. Because sometimes, a few years ago, we have one affair because beekeepers, they use something what was not, not uh, allowed. And this was this gave us very bad uh, light on the whole beekeeper. So we are afraid, um, and therefore we are teaching beekeepers that they must use just what is allowed and in the proper way. That this is the only way how is uh, um, need to treat our bees. Thank you very much for your said. This was a very important thing because indeed using illegal agents, illegal medications sheds a bad light on all beekeepers. So thank you very much for this. And another question. In Slovenia, do you have more forage resources, more flora than in other countries? And for, or fortunately not. Uh, we have seven different different kinds of honeys possible to produce in Slovenia. Two are mixed, like uh, multifloral and forest honey, and then we have acacia, linden, and so on. But uh, we have problems that here in Slovenia in the spring we have very good pasture conditions. Therefore, also our uh, subspecies Carnica it has very good spring development, but in um, end of June, July and August, we don't have any good pasture. So for the beekeepers, it is the most important that they have good bee colonies uh, immediately after winter, that they develop very fast in March or in April, that in May, June, they are strong enough to collect the pastures which are uh, available in that period, because in the July, August, usually it is too hot and it is impossible to, to, to produce a lot of honey. So we don't have good pasture conditions. So therefore also our average honey production, it is very low. It is around uh, uh, 15 kilos of, of honey, but this year also this number, it was much, much lower. Thank you very much for the answer. And I guess uh, this is going to be the last question. Uh, tell me about the support for beekeepers in Slovenia. I mean, governmental support for beekeepers. Yes, uh, we are very glad that we have it, but it was quite a uh, heavy way to get it, uh, especially 2004 when we start with public advisory service. I think that we found good moment uh, to establish it. But now when it's established, we must just work very good because each five years we are evaluated. And if we work well, if we have good results and also if we prepare good program for next five years, then we also receiving money for our future work. Also because we have Apis mellifera carnica, autochthonous subspecies, we are uh, talking with ministry that it is very important to conserve these subspecies also in abroad. So they are willing to support service for breeding program. Also because we have so high density of bees, we have 
more problems with some diseases because for diseases it's much easy to um, uh, to spread if bee colonies are very close to each other so therefore we also need vet service so uh, based on the situation which we are focusing here in slovenia we are uh, asking government for support but uh, i must say that we are quite successful right now and i hope that this will also stand in the future and we are uh, collaborating with almost each ministry quite close quite well um, so i think that we have also good situation for our successful work in the future Thank you very much, Peter, for answering all of our questions and for a very interesting presentation. Thank you for joining our conference and participating in it. Thank you, and we do hope to be able to meet you and discuss about beekeeping in the future as well. Thank you, Adrian.